Hi there, I'm the Utopian Trainer. I hope you're doing well at the moment. Now, we have a choice between a political economy that just seeks to let the majority of the population die or kill them off, or a fully automated luxury communism. Or there are other possibilities that we can have, of course. It's not either one or the other. The reason why I'm saying this is because this video is about a book. It's a review of a book called uh, Four Futures. It is by Peter Fraze. And this is available through Verso Books. I got it a few years ago. And this is the book that made me the utopian trainer. If you are someone who is interested in political life, concerned with healthcare, concerned with human rights, concerned with climate change, this is the book for you. And you can get this book for free. There's all kind of offers with books coming your way. This is the book that you need to be getting. A link is underneath here, uh, so you can then download this book for free as an ebook. So why should you buy it? Well, Pia Phrase outlines different models, different scenarios, different visions of the future. And he kind of the, divides this up into along two axes. On one side, rather, the axes between uh, scarcity on one side and abundance on the other. And the other axes that it has is equality on one side and hierarchy on the other. So in this society... He then says, where there is a strong hierarchy and there is scarcity, then you have a, a kind of dystopian view of what can happen. Namely, exterminism, whereby you have a small minority of people who are dominating the world, dominating the economy. They are very rich and there's a lot of people who are poor. This is actually something which is happening now when you think of trade between the global south, global north. If you're thinking of class system that we have, which is expanding, I mean the, the, the cluft between the, cluft is that an English word? The, the cluft, the, the, the gap between the very rich and the very poor is, is increasing. Uh, this is something which is happening now. The prison system in the US, largely black people, it's a racist system, then being used for slave labor to benefit capitalism. So this is like one view of the future. Another view of the future is where there is equality, but still there is scarcity. He calls this socialism. So a society where there is a lesser degree of technology than in the other examples I'm going to give. But there's still hierarchy within that. So it's like you've seen this in some kind of like hippie societies, in kibbutzes, uh, in various communes where they decide, let's have a simple kind of lifestyle. But there is, so this means the standard of life isn't going to be that high, but there is like a quality. This is another example. Another example he has given is that of rentism. This is where you have uh, a hierarchy. But, not, but you don't have scarcity, you have abundance. So this is where you have a society where technology is very highly advanced to the extent that replicators like in Star Trek have been made, where it means you can just go to the machine and you get the cup of tea or whatever it is that you want. However, there is hierarchy in this system. So even though you can get what you want, you're having to pay for this. And the people who own the patents to these things have a small minority of people. And these, like a small minority of people, like like it's happening now with Microsoft and Apple, someone produces something, something which is an intellectual right, and they may be like just a, a small business, an individual person. The big business comes in and say, we're going to buy that from you, which means they have more than power in society. That's the third scenario. The fourth scenario he has is where you have equality and abundance. He calls this communism. I would ex more call this more uh, fully uh, automated luxury communism. And in this society, there is like as much techno technology as possible. There are robots being used. So this is then produ re reducing the necessary amount of work that people are having to do. And as a result of this, there is a universal basic income, which means there is more of a feature that leisure is more of a feature in, the, in this society. Now... From this book, I produced a workshop that I came up with called Life on Mars. And it's a very successful workshop, largely because of the greatness of, the, of this book. 
Now, he goes on to say that maybe it sounds really good. There's communism, yeah, equality and abundance. But at the same time, there are pros and cons in, every, in each one to the society. Of course, exterminism, there's not many pros there. But in communism, you're saying, OK, you may have economic equality, but you're still going to have like racism. You know, you're still going to have the old hierarchies, even if they're not economic, are still going to be replicated in this in this new system. So, and he also says, but the trouble is, is that the highly technological society is necessarily going to go into utopia, could go into dystopia when you're considering the, the, the question of who controls the technology. Yeah, you're thinking like in China with like face recognition technology, which is then being used by the welfare state there to uh, have a determination on whether these people are actually looking for work or not and it's actually algorithms doing this and there's all, all other books which deal into the whole like democratic or lack of democratic control of algorithms and other technological advantages so this book raises so many questions the thing i really liked about it was that it just uses sci-fi to make a lot of points saying like the society where you have like a high high, a high hierarchy and scarcity is effectively what you're getting in elysium a book i've a uh, film i've reviewed yours is also something which you're seeing in the hunger games we get in the many having to do work for the few for and also provide entertainment for them uh, he's talking about Star Trek. It's because of this book that I he he recommended the book uh, the, the the Mars trilogy by Kim Stanley Robertson. This is another book that I'm going to be a uh, trilogy that I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, so it kind of just shows that with a lot of things, it's kind of uh, like very theoretical. But science fiction has for decades been looking at economic models. And sometimes it's like a yeah, technology war, some kind of like thriller action film. But often there is some kind of like political economy which is in it, such as in Star Trek. Like in Star Trek, there's a there's an episode where someone from the past comes into them and he doesn't understand there's no capitalism anymore. And he was like, how are you supposed to have uh, success in life? How do you, if you're not having to better yourself and try to... Uh, in, have better a career and work on your income and then Picard says no you you have success in life now through bettering yourself anyway this book for futures is the book that you should get you should uh, download it you can get it like in different formats and that's all I have to say so I would like you to click on the subscribe button to this channel of mine you would be a legend for doing that and click also on the notification bell i hope you're doing well at the moment this is a not a pleasant time it's a scary time but this time that we're having now is really demonstrating the need for alternative visions of society we're seeing very surprising radical things where even trump and the tories in the uk are investing money in the economy they're showing the role of the state this role of the state is changing and you're seeing like uh, say in the uk half a million people said they're going to be working as volunteers for the nhs which is massively underfunded in poland here a massively also a massively underfunded health, health system uh which is meaning not enough people are being tested here but you see in through like Vajana Renka that our societies that we have are do not necessarily being based on an individualistic kind of competitive view, but rather there is solidarity going on. So download this book. This makes the, the book gives examples of how this solidarity that we're currently having experiencing can be made concrete in political systems, but then at the same time working out the pros and cons of the different ideas which are there. So with that, I would like you, I would like to wish you a good day. Bye, everyone.